In 2017, the U.S. Department of Agriculture Forest Service estimated forest land comprised 766 million acres, or 33% of the total land area of the United States. The U.S. Department of Agriculture Natural Resources Conservation Service indicates there are 950 tree species native to North America. There are also over 100 non-native tree species that have escaped cultivation and are naturalized in the wild. These forests and trees provide us with a wide variety of ecological goods and services, such as food, medicine, clear air, fresh water, timber, wildlife habitat, and recreation opportunities. People of all ages and from all walks of life enjoy our national forests. Human-caused air pollution is a threat to these areas. Once pollutants from industry, transportation, and agricultural activities are released into the atmosphere, they are transported downwind where they may be deposited onto the ground and into waterways as components of rain, snow, fog, gases, and other fine particles. Most people are familiar with one of these phenomena. Acid rain, which has impacted key tree species like the sugar maple and red spruce. When excess sulfur or nitrogen is deposited into a terrestrial ecosystem, like a forest, changes to soil chemistry may occur. One of the results is soil acidification, which removes nutrients like calcium, magnesium, and potassium from the soil, causing nutrient imbalances and deficiencies in higher plants like trees. Additionally, soil pH can decrease, and the amount of dissolved aluminum in the soil, which is toxic to plants, can increase. A second impact is eutrophication, which happens when an ecosystem receives too much nitrogen. Although nitrogen is a fertilizer and can stimulate growth, in many forests, too much available nitrogen in the soil can upset the competitive balance among different tree species. The species that respond well to higher amounts of nitrogen may grow faster and better, outcompeting those that are adapted to poorer nutrient conditions. Ultimately, both acidification and eutrophication can lead to decreased tree health, a change in species composition, and a reduction in overall forest health, including the productivity of the forest. Species that are sensitive to excess nitrogen or sulfur deposition can become stressed and more susceptible to drought, freezing, extreme temperatures, insects, and pathogens. These trees may experience reduced growth, damage to their crown or foliage, and increased mortality. These changes also impact the humans and animals that depend on these trees and forests for the ecological goods and services they provide. This brings us to the concept of critical loads, which are used to identify when an ecosystem, or a part of an ecosystem, begins to experience harm from sulfur deposition, nitrogen deposition, or both. When the deposition from these elements reaches or exceeds the critical load, damage is expected to occur. For trees and forests, reaching this critical load puts a tree or forest at greater risk of reduced growth, health, productivity, and survival. Critical loads for trees or forests are estimated in a variety of ways. One way scientists calculate critical loads is by using models that account for inputs to and outputs from a forest ecosystem. An example of such a model is the Simple Mass Balance, or SMB model, which is used to estimate critical loads of nitrogen and sulfur deposition. Using such models, scientists can determine when nitrogen or sulfur deposition levels are beyond what an ecosystem can absorb or buffer. A critical load can also be determined by relating deposition levels to the condition of trees across a landscape. For example, forest inventory and analysis program data on American Beach indicates that its survival rate is negatively impacted when nitrogen deposition levels are greater than 10 kilograms per hectare per year. However, not all critical loads are the same. The actual critical load values of sulfur and nitrogen deposition may differ by tree species and by location. 
For example, sugar maple and red spruce are two species found throughout mixed forests in the northeastern United States. Both have lower critical loads than other tree species in the same forest, such as black gum, red maple, or black cherry. Sugar maple and red spruce are particularly sensitive to acidifying deposition that changes soil condition. This deposition reduces important nutrients in soil, like calcium, and increases toxic elements, like aluminum. Now, let's look at another example using black gum and sugar maple. Sulfur deposition levels that reduce the survival of the sugar maple do not harm the black gum. Translated into critical loads, this means that sugar maple has a lower critical load than black gum. When sulfur deposition exceeds the critical load, sugar maple may experience increased mortality and show signs of stress, such as sensitivity to frost and pests. In contrast, the survival of black gum may be entirely unaffected or even slightly improved if competition with sugar maple is reduced. Tree species also differ in their sensitivities to nitrogen deposition, as it can act as both a eutrophying and acidifying agent. As a result, tree species in the same forest can have different critical loads. For example, American beech responds positively to a medium amount of nitrogen deposition and will increase growth under these conditions. In the same forest, however, yellow birch responds negatively to nitrogen deposition and may exhibit a reduction in growth. Therefore, American beech has a higher critical load of nitrogen deposition than does yellow birch. Examining the responses of the two species to sulfur deposition, which only has an acidifying impact, shows that both are sensitive to acidifying deposition. Both the growth and survival of American beech and the survival of yellow birch are negatively impacted by sulfur. Furthermore, the sensitivity of a tree species to deposition may differ by location because of soil conditions. For example, in some forests, soils are thicker and have developed from base cation-rich parent material giving the soil the ability to buffer acidifying nitrogen and sulfur deposition. The soil chemistry in such forests is therefore less impacted by air pollution, and acid-sensitive species, such as sugar maple, have a higher critical load than those found growing in forests with poorer soil conditions. Therefore, critical loads of nitrogen or sulfur deposition for forests across the U.S differ due to species composition and soil conditions. And when scaled to a national level, the interplay of differences in the sensitivities of species and sites to nitrogen and sulfur deposition translates into a wide range and spatial distribution of critical loads of deposition. It is therefore important for forest managers to understand the tree species and forest ecosystems that they manage, to better understand how air pollution may be impacting their forests and the services they provide.